Hello, I'm David D. Hilser. I am a critical thinker, a science dissident, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something university professors won't tell you, the mass media tell you, and of course, those science evangelists will never tell you. In fact, none of them, though, would ever even look at a book like this, Physics Without Photons, in your, by John Eric Pearson. He's a member of the CMPS, and he sent me this book. I'm going to show you how critical thinkers deal with these books like this. Here's how we deal with it. Number one, congratulations. You are a critical thinker. He is. And this idea of physics without photons is a perfectly interesting uh, um, title and a perfect, perfectly interesting idea. It's a small book. I've read his writings. He writes a regular blog on our our website, naturalphilosophy.org. You should read them. I think there's some up there right now, maybe coinciding with this book. Here's a picture of him, by the way. I believe he's from Sweden. I believe so. But he's an independent thinker, pretty much on his own, and he interacts with everybody via the Internet. But what's most important when you see a book like this I get excited. You know why? Because I said, cool, someone's going to open my mind to different ideas and different directions. Because the wave particle duality is an immense problem in physics. And obviously, something like this may give me an idea for my father and I for our work on our model. And we will look at how a person looks at the world who is a, a, a critical thinker. They have a different view of things. So when I go into a book like this, this is really exciting. I'll read you the back. This article is about the enigmatic... Try again. The article is about an enigmatic situation in modern physics. An alternative to the special theory of relativity is presented and has demonstrated that we do not need concept the concept of time, dilation of time and also the reason to existing confusion is due to misunderstandings of stellar aberrations and the experiments done by Michelson Morley. It also demonstrated the bound, that bound electrons generate potential force that becomes real when the second electron is introduced, which demands energy from the ether. This explains why bound electrons do not lose energy and explains also why two light waves in opposite phase can produce zero light. Now this is, yeah, this is pretty technical. And in fact, if you look at the table of contents, you will see a lot of things we have in our community. Our community, our, our CMPS, MPA, which was formerly MPA, has talked about. You see there's uh, wave particle confusion, stellar aberration, Michaels and Morley tests, which is very interesting, the theory of special relativity, atomic clocks, and training ether. Ether is, of course, this idea that the universe is filled that space is filled. Remember I talk about space? Space is filled. Space is not ether. Ether are particles in space. We have gravity and ether winds. He talks about the pioneer anomaly. That's pioneer slowing down. That's interesting. What's on, what the mechanism for that? That's a really interesting problem. The Sanyak effect. Oh yeah. Light and rotation. Oh my gosh, does that put relativity on its head? Light bearing, bending near the sun, of course. Black body radiation, photoelectric effect from Einstein, the Compton effect. Uh, he has discussions, etc., etc., etc. But most important for you is to understand and read this. For me to understand this book, I have had to be in this group for many, many years to understand where this fits. Read what. John Eric has been talking about and writing. I know, for instance, that he is an etherist. He believes in ether, that light can't just be waved in particles without some explanation of something being there. I also know the Sanyak effect is very important because it, was, it says right here, let's take a look at it. The Sanyak effect, something I can talk about in the future. Uh, and it was discovered in 1913. It's a pity that the effect was not discovered before Michelson Morley, Michelson's test with Morley. Physics of today had probably been different in that physics of today would probably have been different in that case. The effect is described either by rotating a rotating area or by translating 
a translating line. Blah, 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 blah. But what's important is, you if you, okay, the Sanyak effect, for me to understand this, I have to go read about what that is, what, how that works. And we have seen that this ether theory can explain. We'll go further in, in. Okay, so in his book, he's explaining gravity, the pioneer anomaly, atomic clocks, eclipse anomalies, tides, changing and arriving times for, for pulsar signals. The ether theory can also explain light bending near the sun. So there's lots of things I can get out of this. I can see where he and I disagree on certain things. He says that there is light bending near the sun much like general relativity, whereas I say, and I agree wholeheartedly with with Ms. Dr. Ed, uh, Edward um, Ed Dowdy, that light only bends when there's mass there. But that's okay. I understand that. Uh, the Pioneer Anomaly, you got to learn about what that is before you can read this book. So you need to have a good background on these things. Atomic growth, the, the theory of special relativity. So when I go through this book, I read it. I read it. It's got an abstract. It's only about 48 pages with its um, references. But again, I think I'm not going to go through the specifics of this book because it is pretty technical. And if you don't know about these areas, it's not going to necessarily make a sense. For instance, you don't know about uh, ether. You don't know what ether theory is about. You don't know what the wave particle duality is about. And I'm going to talk about those things as well because these are things that are problematic. In our new website where we're putting together, I'm not la launching it because we have lots to put in there. These are some of the topics we're going to put in there so you people can get stimulated and understand what these things are. But most important about these books and in conclusion is that these books often dissidents who work in, in isolation, which John Eric used to work in isolation, but he doesn't so much because he's been discussing electronically worldwide, which means you don't have to worry about you live near somebody, that you can discuss and be with critical thinkers around the world through our forums. Everything that we try to do allows everybody to do this electronically. But what's most important is when a, a person who works in isolation sends us either to us, the CMPS, or to physics departments. What do you think is going to happen in a physics department when someone sends this? It's going to be thrown out. They're not going to look at it. They're going to say things like this. Oh, we get these all the time. Did you ever think, Mr. Professor, then getting them all the time, that there may be a real problem? We don't get things all the time about how wheels don't work. We don't get things all the time telling us about how Newton's force equals ma is not a useful equation to describe behaviors in our universe. We get a, They get a lot of stuff about Einstein, and it isn't because of what they think that they want to become famous. That goes to show you that the physics professors, I'm keeping my arms down because I don't want to get mad here, the physics the, the professors, they're not con worried about truth in science. If they were, they're going to go, oh, this is cool, let me read it. They don't worry about that. They worry about fame and they say, oh, this guy's trying to be the next science. Oh, obviously he's replacing special relativity. He wants to be famous. No, maybe he's just trying to figure out how the universe works and realizes like thousands, probably tens of thousands, so it could be millions of people who don't believe relativity is correct. And lots of them who show it wrong in many different ways. Just like we get these books, they get these books. The difference is you should get as many of these books as you can. Find Eric Pieces. Hey, hey, send me a book. And if you don't know what's going on, it don't say, oh, yeah, yeah, Sanyak effect. That's stupid. That doesn't matter. Yes, it does matter. All these things matter. Because when I take a look at it, and I'm going to be interviewing Greg uh, Volk, hopefully, very soon. <laughs> we did an interview where half of it had no audio. But he and I are super fans of these guys. I'm a super fan of every dissident and critical thinker out there. 
I applaud them. Even when they have models I don't agree with. You know why? Because we need to be critical. We need to be thinking. And so when we get these, even as dissidents, oh, my theory is right. This guy's wrong. My father and I have a, a totally different model from this. And we can go head to head with him. Does that mean he's wrong? Does that mean ether's wrong and particle model is right? And that the the lattice theories are wrong? And we are only ones right? No! What we need to do, and what's great, is when we get books like this, we look at them, we read them, we try to understand them. We try to understand, we want to look at what this person is saying. And we may find problems and point them out. And those dissonance may take that to heart and say, oh, you're right. They may not. They must just laugh at us and say, this is what I give to the world and that's it. That's okay, too. Because this could lead to something really, really important. Or it is something really important. We're all just laughing at it. We don't know until we read it and we give it a chance. If you go into this book, like me, who's not an etherist, and go, ah, <laughs> this is all right. I can tell you right away, if it's ether, it's going to be wrong because of X, Y, and Z. I go, that's not the way to go into it. You have to get into the mind set. Why did this person write this? Why did they spend tens of years doing what they are doing? They are very passionate about it. What is it? What drives them? What is behind there? What can I get out of that? I look at every book like this as gold because here you have a real critical thinker. They may just give you a sentence that makes you understand the world better. That's the way I read these books. I love these books. See this shelf up here? It goes way up there. I've got a ladder here. Why? I don't have nearly as many books as Greg Bulk, and we're going to be talking to him, and I want him to pull everybody. I'm trying to get him to do his YouTube channel. He could just sit and pick out papers until he was 173 and just talk about them. But this is really important that we understand. So I applaud Mr. John Eric Pearson. He's got lots of great stuff in this book. I am thoroughly enjoying it. And I, I suggest that you look at every book of a person who has spent lots of time doing their writing these things, communicating, because they're critical thinkers. You don't have to agree with them, but you are going to miss out on something really big or he could be the next one he could be the fame famous guy but that's not what we're out for we're looking to understand the universe and books like this are 10 times better than mainstream books on Higgs bosons on quarks on string theory on worse one of the worst of all is quantum mechanics you will learn more from this guy than all those guys put together, including Einstein himself. You should read Einstein's works. He wasn't so solid about what he said. But again, I wanted to use this book as, a, as, as an example of we how we critical, how was I critical thinker get this. I love them. Keep sending them. If you are a critical thinker and you got your own book and I don't have it, send it to me. I'll talk about it, and I hope I've given you some insight as how to be a critical thinker. This is where universities fail a thousand percent because they go, oh, throw it away. I don't want to throw it away because it's a nice book. It said greetings from me. You got signed. So I hope that gives you an idea. All of you critical thinkers out there, please, please, please. Try to read some of these books. They're fantastic. We've got, I think, thousands of books in our database. db.naturalphilosophy.org. And if it's not working, if there's bugs, send me an email, david at dissidentscience.com. I'm the programmer who well, tries to keep it up. I don't have time to do all the things in my life that I wish I could, but they're all there. You will not be disappointed. Order them online. You can often get books. I bought some great books back here. I can see them right there, and I got other bookshelves. So I hope this is giving you insight. I hope 
I I hope that you don't take my word for it or anybody else's word on faith. Get these books. Read them. Ask John. Send it to me. It's a pretty small book. Pretty chock full. I'm he I Remember, stay critical. Stay thinking. I'm your science therapist. I'm trying to teach you how to be a critical thinker. And I hope today's lesson on how to take a book like this that maybe you don't agree with everything in I don't. But it's valuable. I admire this man. I admire his work. And he has a lot of good things to say. So, ciao for now. Congratulations. Physics without photons. Ask him. He's in our database. Send him an email. He's got some articles right now at naturalphilosophy.org at the very top. Again, our apologize for our website. It's so full. We're rewriting our, our landing page. So, ciao for now.